Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya for those of you that are new here and I'm a watercolor artist. So the holidays are coming up and I wanted to show you a quick little painting just in case you want to make some holiday cards. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so to get started, I've got my watercolor paper. I've got my Arteza brush pens. Um, there's red and teal, seaweed green, and night sky blue. So if you wanted to follow along with me and you have the Arteza brush pens, those are the ones I'm using. I've got a generic paintbrush here. I do have my Grumbacher paintbrushes right next to me if I pull in my Winsor Newton watercolors, but if I don't, I'm probably gonna be just using a generic um, brush just because the Arteza brush pens, um, it's more of like an ink-based uh, watercolor, so I'm not sure if I would be ruining my Grumbacher paintbrushes. I'm not 100% sure about that yet. So just to be safe, I'm using a generic paintbrush. And I've got my water, my paper towel, and a pencil. So to get started, we're just gonna be sketching out lightly two uh, little mittens, and it's gonna have all sorts of greenery coming out. So it'll be um, just something kind of like wintry greens, just maybe like evergreens or some little berries or something like that. So not really flowers, just more greenery. All right, so to get started, we're just gonna be sketching out, and I'm gonna have the mittens kind of coming in on an angle, almost like a little triangle where they're just like, the top is touching, and then they're just kind of coming out like that. All right, so always think about your composition. So I'm gonna start with just the top of the mittens here, and you could just go ahead and just sketch two little mittens. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can always erase. And I'm gonna have them bleeding off the paper here, um, just because I kind of like um, the composition of something bleeding off the page rather than it just being sitting right in the middle of the page. It just makes it a little bit more interesting if it's bleeding off some of the edges. All right, and then I'm going to do the other mitten coming this way, and this one's going to be kind of hiding underneath this one. And then you can bring in the little thumb. So I usually just draw out like a little oval, and then I just kind of bring in the thumb a little bit like that. And you can erase whatever lines you don't want to keep. So that's why I'm always sketchy about it. Just keep drawing it till it looks right to you and then just erase the lines that don't look right to you. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of these. And that's about all we're going to be drawing. The rest is the greenery and we're actually just going to be putting the Arteza brush pens on the paper. Um, so we're not going to really be drawing that out. Oops. Okay, so to get started, I am going to use my night um, my night sky blue. It's almost like a Payne's gray. It's like a really bluish gray, and I, I love this color for like doing shadows. So I'm just gonna kind of outline my mitten here. And I'm not gonna outline too much this part because I'm gonna have this part be a little bit more furry, like it's white. I'm just gonna go ahead and outline my mittens. And this is just a really, really quick, quick little painting. Like if you wanna make cards or you wanna put a little painting on your mantle or end table or whatever, just de decorate for the holidays. All right, so then I'm gonna just grab some water and I'm gonna go over my line and I'm gonna to try to stay inside my mitten rather than going on the outside of the line, I'm going on the inside of the line. So I'm dragging the paint in towards the mitten, not out. Always think about where maybe your shadows will be because there's gonna be maybe some shadows under the thumb here. Grab a little more water if you have to, let it bleed in, let it do its thing. You can always help it along a little bit if you want a little bit more. Just keep carrying that water in. And if you're not picking up enough, that means you just didn't go on the line enough. Just go a little closer to that line. There, that's all I want is it to bleed in just a little bit right now. All right, I'm gonna do it again. Just water going on my line, pulling it in towards my mitten, not outside. Grab as much water as you want. I'm gonna leave the middle part of my mittens a little bit uh, lighter, maybe even just white of the paper showing through, just because it gives it a little bit more dimension if you have highlights and shadows. 
So you don't want to make this all solid. You do want to leave some sh some highlights. And then, like I said before, think about where your shadows are going to be, and you might want to bring in a little bit more of the watercolor there. All right, just crisping up your line a little bit. If it starts getting too fuzzy, crisping it up. And I'm going to, I know that made this little line here because I want the shadow to be on this part of the furry, part of the mitten. So I am going to pull that watercolor paint onto this part of the mitten. And then maybe I'll carry a little bit over like that because I want it to look like this mitten is on top of that one. So you're gonna shadow that one. All right, so that's all we're gonna do for the mitten at this point. I'm now gonna pick up my, let's see, let's pick up the teal. And we're just gonna start doing some greens, like they're coming out of, like you shoved them all into the, the mittens here and they're just kind of coming out. So you could do any kind of greens you want. I'm just gonna do really quick generic ones. I just made a line and I'm just gonna be making like these little teardrops and it's just like one, one little stroke. So you're just putting down, pushing, lifting up, put down, push, and then lift up. They're just very generic little little strokes. And once you go over that with your watercolor um, uh, mark um, with your watercolor brush, and you put the water on it, it's going to start blurring it a little bit, which makes it look a little bit um, more like uh, like it's like all the colors are bleeding together. So it's not going to look as pronounced as this. They're going to be meshing together all these little colors. Leave some room for other colors, because I am going to be bringing in a different green also. So just very, very quick, just quick little sketches. You can have some coming out like this. And I think I want another one coming out here. Maybe a little something here. All right, now I'm gonna bring in my other green. So I'm not laying any water down yet because if I laid water down now, um, then this uh, brush pen might not work as well. So I wanna lay down all my watercolor marker first and then I'm gonna go over it with the water. And this one could be pretty much the same thing. If you want to make it more like a, a branch, you can, like an evergreen. Then you would bring your lines out like this. So it'd be more of a straight line. So see the difference? This one's more of like a greenery, um, like leafy green. And this one here is more like an evergreen bristles. And I'm just having these lines come out. So you can play around with all different greens. You could even throw in some berries in here too. That would be really cute too. If you threw down the berries, I would do it now while you've got the red marker on top of the white paper. Otherwise, if you do the red marker on top of where you already did green, it may not show up as well or as bright. And then bring some of those greens down all the way to the, to the base here because you're gonna wanna fill in most of this white space down here because that's where they all come together and it's very clustered and you don't really see the background. Where they start feathering off like this, you will definitely see your background. So you can bring them all the way down. And it's okay if they're overlapping. Um, it, it's beautiful when the colors just start to mix together. So I wouldn't worry about that. And if you think it's getting too crowded down here, then just don't bring the, the leaves all the way down to the bottom. I am also going to bring in a little bit of that um, night sky blue that we had done down here just to bring in a little bit more depth. I want a darker color up here. And just kind of watch where you're putting it because you want it to be evenly spaced. You don't want like all one color on one side and one color on the other. Make sure it's all evenly spaced out. All right, so now's the fun part. I'm gonna take my, my, uh, my brush here with just water 
And I'm going to start going over some of those leaves that I had just done. I'll work on one color first, just so my mark, my brush doesn't get all um, with a, a, a ton of different colors on it. So I'm just going to work one color at a time. So I'm just doing the teal that I had done first. And it's okay if you get some of the other color on there. I mean, they're going to mesh together anyways. But it's nice just to keep your brush nice and clean first. See how beautifully that is starting to mix together? I love, love, love that look. So just go over one color and bring it down also. Bring it like all the way down to here because like I said before, this is going to be the most clustered part of your painting right in here. So you're not going to see that much of the white paper. All right, now I'm going to go to a different color. I'll go to this uh, seaweed green that I had done. So you're still going to see some of your original little brush strokes that you had done, but you're also going to be seeing um, where it's uh, blurred out a little bit and the water is just kind of staining the paper a little bit. So it's really nice because then you've got a little bit of push and pull of lights and darks. And I love that look. And let the colors just start blending together now. My teals are bumping up to my, um, my seaweed green. And then this one here, since I was pulling everything forward like I did with um, the marker when I drew it out, this one here is going to be the opposite way because it's more bristly. So you're going to start from the inside of the line. I'm going to do my, my, my little branch, my little stick part here, and then I'm going to have them coming out like that. So it's just which direction you're going um, that you're pulling your, your brush. So out just so you keep with those little bristles. Okay, and now I'm gonna blur a little bit of that blue that I had done before, the darker blue that we had done for the mittens. And I'm just laying down a little bit of water to blur it out a little bit, mix it with some of the other colors. If you think that you need a little bit more green down here, go ahead and add it now. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of that branch, that evergreen branch right there. Use a little water. Okay, so now if you think that you have a lot of white space still in here, you could just go ahead and dab water just to close up that white space. It will automatically just mesh the colors together. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white space showing through. I like that contrast of the light and dark, um, but I don't have too much of the white showing through right here. All right, now I'm gonna take that same color, my night sky blue, and I'm gonna go over my little mittens one more time, and I'm gonna put down the paint exactly where I had put it down before, because I'm gonna blur it again, but I just wanna give it another layer, a little more dimension. And if you like it nice and light like that, then you don't have to do the second layer if you don't want to. I like things a little bit darker, a little bit, a little bit more of a pop to my paintings. So just water on my brush, and I'm gonna start pulling that paint in again. And I'm going to give it another little layer here. And you don't have to pull it in as much or, or you can. If you think you need to close up a little of that white space, just pull a little bit more in. Now you could do this obviously with regular watercolors too. I just wanted to show you with my watercolor markers um, just because I love using them so much. They're just really fun for quick little paintings like this. Um, but if you wanna just go ahead and use your Winsor Newton or whatever brand you use, you know, definitely, definitely do that as well. All right, I am gonna put a little bit of detail on my mittens as soon as this dries. If you wanna go ahead and make the top part of your mittens um, a different color, you definitely can. I'm gonna leave mine white, but I have the white of the paper still showing through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of, of that Payne's Gray or um, Night Sky Blue that I had used, and I'm just gonna bring it around just a little bit, a little bit of color down on this white paper, just so it makes this 
furry part of the mitten pop a little bit. So again, I'm just bringing in a little bit just with water, just using my original uh, paint here that I'm not laying down any new paint. This is just the, the paint that I had done before. And you can blur that out a little bit. Now be careful not to do this part of the outside of your mitten because then it's gonna start blurring your mitten out that way. We just wanted to add a little color right around this part of the mitten just so this pops a little bit. All right, I'm gonna see if this is dry. It's pretty dry. You can use any color you want for this part. I'm just gonna add a little bit of decoration, a little bit of maybe like a braided look like these were knitted mittens. And I'm just gonna make a line right down the middle. Now, if your page is still wet, it's gonna blur automatically. You can let it dry completely. You can add it while it's still wet. It just depends on what look you like. So I put a little line down and now I'm just doing these little V's just to give it a little bit of a hint that they're knitted mittens, like that. Okay, same thing on this one. A little line down in the middle and then little V's, two little rows of V's on either side of that line. And you can make any kind of pattern you like. This is just a really easy little pattern. I thought it'd be simple for um, just to show you how to do it. And then you can take your your water and just blur those little lines as well so they become part of the mitten. Otherwise, it's just too stark if you don't put water on it. So you definitely wanna put water on it. Now, if your mitten was wet to begin with before you laid down the marker, then maybe you don't need to do this part because it probably bled already for you. But my mitten was pretty dry. So I'm gonna add some water. Like that. Look how cute that is. It's adorable. Now I did pull out my red too, thinking I wanted to maybe, maybe do some red berries, but I'm actually liking the painting just like that. I'm not sure I want to add red, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and add a couple little red berries. Um, if you were to do the red on the inside, pick where your whites are. Just add a little bit of red where your white is. Because if you laid down a little bit of red um, where your blues and greens are, um, it may not show up as much, but I don't want that many anyway. So I just want a few little berries here and there. So at the beginning of the painting, if you wanted berries more down in this part of your painting, um, leave a little bit more of the white space there. And then I'm just gonna blur those out too, because I like everything a little bit mixed together. I don't like when it's too perfect and too round and you know, um, I just like them bleeding together. And you know what? I think I wanna add one more over here. So I just did like three little dots and then I'm just going in over it with just some water and bleeding them together, just like that. Perfect. Okay, so if you wanted to add a little bit more dimension, what you can do is um, to this furry part here, you can add a little bit of, of that Payne's Gray or whatever color you want. I'm just gonna pull up a little bit of that Payne's Gray. So I'm acting as if my painting is my palette right now. So I'm just lifting up a little bit of that, that, uh, that paint from my mitten and I'm just gonna dab it on there almost like it's a furry little mitten. So I'm leaving the white of the paper showing, but I'm also um, bringing in a little bit of that, that paint right into there like that. So I didn't lay down anything with my, my watercolor marker. I just lifted up the paint I already, already had on my page. So my painting was actually act, acting as a palette at that moment. So it just brings in a little bit of texture there. Now I've got my uh, Micron um, um, archival ink pen here. If you wanted to add a little bit of like berries or a little bit more foliage or something, or even outline your mittens, you can definitely do that too um, with this. Otherwise you can just call it done right like that. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then I'm gonna add a little bit of my, um, my archival ink. Yeah. Okay, so most of my painting is dry. Some of it still has a couple little wet spots. So I'm gonna try and avoid those spots. If you wanna add, I don't even know if it's gonna show up at this point. Uh, yes, it is. You can go ahead and add a little bit of foliage and I'm sorry if my hand is in the way here. It's such a little painting. But all I'm doing is I added a little line and just little, a little line work of um, leaves. Sometimes I like line work with my paintings. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. So it's just a line going up 
and then just little leaves coming off that line. It just gives an extra little dimension to your painting. You definitely don't need to do this. It's not like it's making that much of a difference, but I sometimes like little, little details of the pen. And I think I'll do another one up here. So just go over some of your darker grays with your pen if you want just a little bit more dimension. And you don't have to go over all of it. You can just go over little parts of it here and there. I probably wouldn't do the braided part just because you want that to be a little bit more bled in and look like part of the mitten, like it's all meshing together. So you could just go ahead and just do some of the, um, the, out, the outer lines of the mittens here. All right, so you can keep going ahead and playing with this if you want to. You can keep adding more leaves, more foliage. You can add more designs, maybe a little bit more um, color, maybe some bows on here if you wanna put a little bow on here. That's totally up to you, but I think I'm gonna just leave the painting just like this. And you can make a ton of these and just give them away as little cards too for the holidays. So it's just a really cute idea. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.